Divine Ikubo, better known as Rema, stands out as one of the most gifted artists in the country, defying all odds to build an internationally recognized music career. Yet, amidst the undeniable allure of his artistry lie questions about his journey. From a background in gospel music to the unconventional sounds of The Devil Song, Rema's success raises eyebrows and sparks curiosity. Another banga, banga. So who is Rema? Is he a rebel molded by the untimely deaths of his father and brother? Does his prowess as a songwriter indicate a genius at work? Or is he merely a skilled artist who has struck gold? Be sure to watch this video to the end because that is where Rema's true identity will be revealed. Born on the 1st of May year 2000, Rema came into the world as the second and youngest son of Mr. and Mrs. Ikubo. His early years were marked by the comforts of a well-to-do family, largely due to the professional success of his father, Mr. Ikubo, who held a high-ranking position within one of Nigeria's major political parties, the People's Democratic Party. The Ikubo family reveled in a life of contentment, basking in the privileges that came with Mr. Ikubo's success and financial stability. However, this blissful existence was shattered when Rema's father was found lifeless in a hotel room in Benin. The circumstances surrounding his demise were cloaked in mystery, leaving the family stricken with grief and grappling with the haunting questions that lingered. Given Mr. Kuba's prominent role in the political landscape, it was only natural for suspicions of foul play to arise. In the absence of a clear plan, Rema's mother found herself in a state of helplessness, struggling to secure even the most essential necessities for herself and her sons. As if fate hadn't dealt a hard enough blow, the Ikubo family was soon to experience yet another tragic loss, the death of Rema's older brother. These deeply personal and distressing details of Rema's life, though hidden from the public eye, would later be brought to light as he took to social media to candidly discuss his profound losses. In September of 2020, Rema posted a controversial tweet about the deaths of his father and older brother, unafraid to point fingers at those he held responsible for his devastating losses. One of his targets was the People's Democratic Party, whom he openly accused of bearing responsibility for his father's untimely demise. But Rema's grievances did not end there. In a haunting moment, he recounted the harrowing experience of his brother undergoing a surgical procedure in the dim light of a flickering candle. Tragically, an unforeseen accident occurred during the procedure, leading to a fatal cut and the irreparable loss of a precious life. The losses Rema experienced in the untimely deaths of his father and brother had profound effects on him. Fortunately, music became his refuge and served as a medium of expression for the young artists. In interviews, the superstar disclosed that he grew up as a loner due to the tremendous suffering he endured. At first, when I lost my dad, I was kind of like isolated because... It is no wonder that his music carries the weight of his experiences, resonating deeply with his listeners. Amidst all these tragedies and financial difficulties, Rema's resilient mother ensured that her son received fundamental educational qualifications. During his formative years, Rema attended primary and secondary school in Benin City, just like any other kid. But as time went by, he made a difficult choice to forego university studies and embark on a mission to provide for his loved ones. With this motive in mind, Rema made a secretive departure from his family home and went out in search of better opportunities without even informing his mother. His vagabond journey first took him to Kotonu, where he worked tirelessly for a while, and then he continued his relentless pursuit of success in Ghana. Rema took on various jobs to make ends meet, but through it all, he had a clear goal in mind to make money and ensure his mother's well-being, no matter the sacrifices he had to make along the way. All of these were all part of his desperate attempt to amass wealth and provide for his mother. And luckily, Rema's unwavering determination paid off. He managed to accumulate a substantial sum of money during his time away, and when he finally returned home, he used a portion of his hard-earned earnings to buy a car for his mother as a gesture of love and gratitude. Hey. Like that. Yeah, the moment I just landed, I had to just get a car ASAP. Naturally, this sparked intrigue and raised questions about the nature of the job opportunities that could yield such wealth in such a relatively short period of time. Or is it what I think it is? Rema's homecoming was accompanied by a reignited passion for his second love. 
music. I saw the change in my trajectory and I expressed it. However, before we delve deeper into his musical endeavors, it's important to shed light on his first love, which lay within the realm of drawing. From the tender age of eight, Rema exhibited a profound I know, affinity for it drawing, just kind of particularly me out gravitating towards the enigmatic allure how of dark I saw abstract art. I used to zone out in class, you know, sketching. You know, I just had a whole other level of imagination. This artistic inclination shaped his early years and served as a source of self-expression and exploration. Growing up in Benin, Rema discovered solace and support within the embrace of his local church. Over time, it became a breeding ground for his vocal talents and a place where he could refine his singing abilities under the watchful eyes of the devout. But let's be real, guys. Life isn't always rainbows and sunshine. Rema, like any other young man trying to make money, soon realized that relying solely on the church wouldn't pay the bills. Financial stability was what he craved. So, you know what he did? He made a gutsy move. He turned his back on the holy tunes of gospel music and embraced what some self-righteous souls would label as the devil's music. He took up gigs at parties, political rallies, bars, and anywhere he could find a stage and an audience. Naturally, this decision stirred significant controversy within the church and Rema's own family, causing a stir of discontent and conflicting emotions. Right then in Benin, I started going for competitions, going to bars, lounges, um, political rallies, just trying to get on the stage or hold a microphone to at least get sprayed some money to come back home and just feed my family because yeah. we're going through tough times. I lost my dad. To them, it felt like a betrayal, an action that defied the sacred foundations that had once guided Rema's musical journey. The departure from his gospel roots ruffled feathers and ignited debates about the path he had chosen to pursue. Slowly but surely, Rema's mother began to accept and even support his audacious choices. Um, but for me, it was quite weird, you yeah. know, most especially to my mom, because, you know, she's well known in the church. So um, I didn't really do much explaining. I just told her to trust me. Over time, Rema's journey as an artist took shape gradually establishing an audience for himself. However, his story took an intriguing turn when he formed a band alongside his then friend, now known as Alpha P, naming themselves the RNA, Real <laughs> Association. Together, they created songs that resonated with their shared vision. Yet, as is often the case, the union between Rema and Alpha P was not destined till death. Whispers in the industry circulated, hinting at unresolved issues and eventually led to their unfortunate split. Speculation swirled and fans yearned for answers, but the truth remained veiled in secrecy. Rema's ascension into success was way more than that of his former bandmates. Yet, an invisible wall seemingly separates the two artists as they have refrained from collaborating, leaving their unresolved tensions lingering in the background. Like countless other artists, Rema harbored an insatiable hunger for discovery and recognition. He yearned to carve his name into the annals of music history, to leave an indelible mark on the world. He was determined and so he kept working on creating covers of popular songs. But then, something clicked in his mind. He had this light bulb moment that told him he needed to try something different. He deliberately selected recently released tracks and decided to reinterpret them. With careful discretion, Rema started this new approach with his eyes on the prize. And then, Fortune smiled on him when he created a cover of a song by The Prince. That was the moment that changed his career forever. His breakthrough caught the attention of the industry, and suddenly, Rema found himself in the spotlight he had always longed for. At first, he saw himself as a rapper, but thanks to the guidance of The Prince, Rema discovered a newfound love for Afrobeats. Driven by ambition, he immersed himself in the art of singing and worked hard to improve his skills as a performer. Rema didn't limit himself to Afrobeats alone. He ventured into the realms of pop and trap, letting his artistic curiosity lead the way. But even as he explored these different genres, Afrobeats remained his main focus. In 2019, Rema's career took a turn for the better when he got signed to Maven Records and released his electrifying single, Do Maybe. Since then, it has been sky high for the young Nigerian as he keeps dropping hits after hits after hits, topping both local and international charts. 
In recent interviews, Rema tells us more of his personal life, especially before fame and money, and what it is like now that he has the world at his fingertips. But even without the interviews to ask Rema about his past, he shares his story behind the lyrics in one of his songs. One which stood out to his fans was in his song Holiday, where he said, because I want to my family, now me see my own guy laptop. This song is no doubt a hit, but that line got people asking if it was just cleverly written or if Rema was trying to tell us something. I really don't want to glorify stealing, but yeah. yeah, it was just very unfortunate. In his own words, desperate times driven by an unwavering determination to provide for his family pushed him to such drastic measures. Even his love life has got this mysterious aura. People just can't seem to stop speculating and getting all worked up about who he might be dating. It's like a whirlwind of rumors, with the public eagerly pairing him with different ladies, trying to figure out who has captured Remy Boy's heart. But here's the thing, Rema has consistently echoed that he's currently single, and he's made it clear that he's only looking for a relationship that's built to last. As we wrap up this fascinating story, we hope that we've been able to show you the real Rema. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Make sure to like this video, leave a comment and hit the notification button so you always know when I have a new video up.